begin. Starting off with Magician's Soul, sending our key card master plan from the deck to the graveyard. This card wants to continually be sent from the field to the graveyard to keep on searching. We have Quick Fix, which will be getting us the Spiral Gears. And the Master Plan will be getting us the Spiral Missions. So we want to keep on looping them. Grab more missions, grab more plans. Keep on doing it. Uh, gears and Missions is going to be what we're looping. Now, as we draw, let's read into what this field accomplished. A searched for anti-spell fragrance, thus our thrust and any other spells will not be activatable unless they're quick play and we gotta activate it in response to it or just activate it right away. The Trigate can negate anything. The Nightmare Griffin states that any special summon monster that's not linked cannot activate, but we have a Apollo USA, which we could link up with. Apollo USA is double monster negate, so we have negate, 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 can't activate unless linked and can't activate spells. And we have Sleeper pop two cards in the field. We have about six disruptions and or floodgates that are public. Let's go. Flip up the anti-spell. Well, we can't pax now. We had to chain it. All right. Apollo would say negating the hard once per turn Martha. This is very similar to the power of a branded fusion effect, which it has now been nullified. Sleeper gonna pop the Martha before we even summon an Elise, and just like that, essentially a first turn kill, and a combo that's only allowed because Maxi keeps it in check. There you go, congratulations. Let's hop into another duel. Chicken game, please draw into something good here. Well, Soul Servant could stack that good card to guarantee we draw it, which would be our Magician Souls. Very well done. Magician Souls will be able to draw an additional card by sending the chicken game to the grave. Soul Servant drawing another card. So we have draw, 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 draw three so far. Draw four because we sent two to the grave or to the draw two. Dark Magical Circle, grab a Dark Magician card among the top cards of our deck. And after all of that, we have no public disruption. We have our set Super Poly though. We could fuse the opponent's fields. Battle we go, evenly match, banishing everything but the super polymerization. Now it's super poly, generally if the opponent has two monsters of the same attribute, you will be able to fuse them. Call by the Grave is gonna be fingering the drone Lockbird, thus we will continue to be searching our deck. Now, I don't know about you, I don't like that Drone Lockbird is now 70% usage on the ladder at the highest rank according to the official in-game data. I think it makes the game a lot more toxic. I do not, I know it stops toxic combos, but I'm trying to play fun decks like Evil Eye, Gold Pride, which likes to search a lot and not really end on much. And now I'm getting randomly Drone Lockbirded. What the hell? Triple Tactics Talent, we are choosing to draw two. Ash will be negating you, I do not think so. Talent, compared to other cards, are a bit different, where, let's say a Kit Kalos, it activates. You don't know if you're gonna send the card to the graveyard or add it to the hand. You don't tell your opponent until it happens on resolution. But Triple Tactics Talent, you have to choose which effect to activate. So if you choose to look at the hand, they then can't Ash. You have to choose the draw two to get Ashed. Now we got Ricochet to sheet all over Dark Magician. Can Ricochet take control of a normal monster? Target a face of monster your opponent controls. Yup, and then you could take control of it, okay? Also, you could tribute one plant monsters and then they can't activate the monster's effect. All right, sure. Magician's Rod is going to get ashed. We have nothing to stop it. When will we get sheet on? That is gonna be our main disruption. We could tribute the opponent's monster to take control of another monster. Ricka Petal has the insane follow-up recursion effect of reboarding during every opponent's end phase and then get searching for a Ricka card, but because we have two waters on the field, we're gonna fuse with them. Fusing into our Garura. Garura or Moo Dragon's gonna be the main cards you summon off of the opponent having two cards of the same attribute. So you wanna know that yourself to play around the Super Poly. As long as you don't have two monsters of the same attribute, you're generally safe unless they're playing an extra spicy fusion. 
now. Ooh, 2,400 defense. We took 48. This reflects the battle damage times two. It's double battle damage. And when we take battle damage, we're actually going to reborn that life points right back. So it's fine. Plus 48, back to 8,000 life points. Now we got Jasmine. We're going to use the Ricochet. Wait a second. We take control, and then Jasmine could tribute the monster. It doesn't have to be a plant. You could tribute one monster this card points to. I have never seen Ricka do this in the thousand Ricka duels I've seen. Ain't no way. <laughs> what? Wow. Ash negate. That's a very nice play. If you're bricked, we swung in with the dry ass, then took control of the opponent to then tribute it with the Jasmine. Very cool play. And we don't have a princess, so we have no disruption whatsoever besides the Ash. Ash negate. And for some reason, Tiny Jasmine is at 1,800 attack. The rod can't even swing over her. Well, we could kill ourselves. Okay. Now back to you. Rick up paddle during the end phase. As we said earlier, continually reborning during the end phase, giving you that much needed follow up plays. Rick of Con Con giving us the glamour. Glamour could then tribute our monster to search for two cards. Rick of Petal just activating the search. We're just going to preempt the maxi right now. And look at that. Is that the third Ash? I think so. Ash, 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 Triple Ash, Ash off the top of the deck. And that's what you get for playing Dark Magician. Let's speed this up. Glamour tribute the pedal, grab the Rick of Primula. Primula will trigger special summon onto the field. Princess could special summon on the field. We're going to then exceed this up into the Strena. Strena could recycle a card in the graveyard back to our hand, which will be our Cactus Bouncer. And then we're going to tribute the Strena to summon a monster from the deck, triggering the Strena and the Mudan summon from the deck to search and summon a monster negate. That's what I'm thinking. Monster negate. Yep, we got our monster negator. Mudan grabbing our Con Con. Show cons the Melius. Melius reborn a monster from the graveyard that we do not have. We don't have the tiny Loki. We don't even have lethal. Does Cactus Bouncer's effect in play right now? While another plant is on the field, neither player could special summon monsters. We love floodgates. Chicken game off the top of the deck. We're going to draw something that will out this field. No. Magician's soul will get negated and also can't be special summoning because the Cactus Bouncer. No special summon, effect to negate, lethal damage. Very nice. Cross duel over master duel. That could have been the case if cross duel is more like team fight tactics. I think so. And for some reason, team fight tactics makes millions of dollars a month, but there's no power. It's a fully free to play. I, how? How is it making money? This, uh, like we know why, but why? Now, branded generally, uh, oh, out of all the other meta decks, are going to be less likely to be hand trapping you turn one. But because of that, they're going to have a crazy amount of plays and very likely, even among 60 cards, have super polymerization because we had to make that card at three. Galaxy Tomahawk is here. I've been talking about the Dragon Ruler cards being all about Galaxy Tomahawk Turbo. It's all about getting two level sevens onto the field, and then you're gonna be making the same exact play over and over. So memorize this if you wanna play the Armed Dragon Dragon Ruler deck. And Dragon Rulers are fully unlimited, all at three. All of the mini rulers, the big rulers, three, 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 three across the board. We have Apollo USA, which will be protecting our core play through the Mecha Phantom Beast of Roradon. On summon, it's gonna summon three tokens. And to simplify the game state, the Aurodon states that you cannot link summon for the rest of the turn. No more linking. But we could synchro. I think the card meant to say you should not be able to use the extra deck for the rest of the turn, but we forgot that. We have Borload Savage Dragon adding an Ani Negate on top of our triple monster negates. We have about four disruption here. Cupid Pitch, when sent to the graveyard, will be searching for a band in the TCG, not Corridor but it's going to be allowing the summon of the Colossus. It's an activated thunder effect from the hand to then send a thunder on the field to the graveyard, thus meeting the two requirements of Colossus, disallowing the opponent from adding cards from the deck to the hand. So we cannot thrust a card into our hand. We cannot brand it in high spirits a card to our hand, but we have branded fusion anyway, but the boar load could negate it, but the boar load is negate the activation. Thus we could add it from the graveyard back to our hand and activate it again. Let's go. 
Oh, we also can't Lubellion. Can't Lubellion. That's another card effect we can't use. So let's see what we do here. Cartesia activating the fuse. It's a hard once per turn. The Apollo USA is going to negate. Bring in high spirits while I didn't say you can't activate it. You just can't add. So we're still going to be using the other part of the effect here. Reveal to then send a Titan clad from the extra deck to the grave. We're just not going to be adding from our deck to our hand. That's fine. Now we're going to be using branded in white. At least one of the monsters have to be a dragon. Using with our hand in field for Gangrenol. Gangrenol could be a good negate here. This will send a Serenir. Then Serenir will send the Retribution to add back the branded fusion when it gets negated by the Boar Load. Apollo, negate. Very well done. We can still thrust a card into our back row. It's a battle. It's a battle. Big enough to take out the Apollo USA, so we lose out on one more monster negate. Thrusting a card into the back row, which will be our fusion duplication to copy the negated branded fusion during the next turn. Activate that branded fusion, negate the activation. This is where, if we had retribution and we added back to our hand, it would be activatable again. Even a tragedy, if tragedy could banish, reset it onto the field, we could activate it again. Add back the Cartesia, Titan clad summon from the deck, our Al. Oh my gosh. Add back, then resolve summon Albaz, then fuse with the opponent's field then summon a Mirror Jade, then banish the other card in the field if we want, then trigger the Albion to set up another disruption during the end phase. A full field clear. Just because it didn't happen outside the end phase did not mean we did not get to clear up the entire field. Oh my Jesus. And we're gonna be banishing the Colossus face down. Or no, no, it's face up. We're, I'm thinking on uh, the wrong deck. Albion set up. What was going on here? This is ridiculous. How did we lose? Triple Apollo USA, <laughs> Borload Savage Dragon. This is post ban list with Branded Despia, by the way. Colossus, you couldn't add cards from the deck to the hand. Now we could summon from the grave, fuse with either side of the field. We could copy the Branded Fusion in the graveyard. Absolute madness. And to clarify, we had even more disruption. We had the Sarvis. The Sarvis disallows the opponent from targeting any of our monsters with a card effect as we could discard to negate. But Brandon did all of that without targeting anything on the field. We dealt with the whole field without targeting. Unbelievable. All right, we have Armed Dragon level three, discard on summon, tribute itself to come forth and summon for the deck, level five. Level five being sent to the graveyard is activating. Because you summoned a monster through a monster effect, the Gangrenol Null is gonna be banishing itself to summon from the deck or extra deck a monster, which will be our Quem. Quem will then send a card from the deck to the graveyard, which will be another Quem that does not add to a combo here. Well, actually, you know, we could reborn it with a banishment if we want. We have the Armagram banishing two from the graveyard to summon itself onto the field here. Now we are using our branded banishment to reborn the Quem, fusing with the fields. Now, because the banishment banishes, the Quem can't reborn the Mirror Jade, but the Quem could instead try to reborn something else in the graveyard that was properly summoned if it's a fusion. Triggering the Quem, reborn the Cartesia. Cartesia could get fused in with our fields. Now, on every effect activation, you're gonna be burning for 600, but the Armagram just negated it. What the heck? Target a face-up monster, its effects are negated, and it loses 1,000 attack. Uh, why didn't it lose? For each equipped card you control. Okay, so it didn't lose anything. We have the Dragon Doom Rider. Doom Rider Dragon is here. Once per turn, you can detach two materials, target a face-up card in the field, and destroy it. Wipe it up, clean them up as we now Zeus up. Zeus is ready and there's still a fusion duplication, so what do we do? Had we preempted the Zeus, you would, yeah, we had to actually toggle on, activate Zeus, and knowing that they have a fusion duplication, how would that work out? It would chain link to summon a fusion monster and the Albion or Lubellion it summons would not be able to activate because the Zeus would wipe it. So by activating the fusion duplication before the Zeus, it's guaranteeing that what we summon, which would have to be an Albion because the Lubellion has nothing to discard, it will be able to activate. But then I guess we could wait on the Zeus. Copy the branded fusion. Fusing with the Masker, making a Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade would have not been able to banish. It would have been gone. It would have left the fields. But then it would destroy the field during the end phase. We have Blaster Dragon Rulers come forth and summon. We are triggering our effects here while the Masquerade's not triggering. We're activating the optional effect of the Mirror Jade for the non-target Monster Banish, attempting to 
banish the Zeus off the field, forcing them to activate, requiring them to then wipe out their own field here, as the Mirror Jade could then still banish the Zeus, but it would activate to also wipe out further cards that are potentially summoned, which will be none. Ran in High Spirits recycling itself back to the hand. Masquerade is here because there was an extra deck months on the field. Cartesia recycle. Albion had a brand in red to be used next turn. It just like that, despite opening up what many would call a first turn kill, Branded was able to persevere. They did not need to add cards from the deck to the hand. So if you're wondering, is the deck affected by Draw and Lockbird? Well, even better than Draw and Lockbird, the Colossus disallowing adding from the deck completely, and they're able to break it like nothing. Add back the Branded in white. And again, this is with the new ban list that specifically targeted Branded Despia. Somehow was not able to win the duel here. Now the Masquerade will only burn for 600 if it was Fusion Summoned. If it's Reborn from the Grave or from the Banished Pile, it does not burn for 600 per activation. On Summon, discard the Branded in High Spirits, which could add itself back to the hand during the end phase, making a Dragostepelia here. Now we have a real Masquerade, which means we can't do anything. We activate something, we die, so we can't. You have to be able to pay the cost. Very well done. Post ban list, Branded Despia. Unfortunately, we have Curry Car, which does nothing on your very first turn. Thunder Dragon is not a dragon. So we have Dark, Dark, but they are not the same attribute, same type. So we cannot Garura and we cannot Bora Load. We have Dark Cybers, Dark Thunder, Dark. This is where you move Dragon. Move Dragon would have been perfect here if you could make the room. What are we super polying? Wait, the Dark, dark Cybers and Dark Thunder Dragon. What does this make? Oh yeah, Dra I said Dragospelia. Oh yeah, uh, our fusion monster. <laughs> there you go. You now cannot use the Mask Arena to link up during the main phase, and you also are not stopping me from adding cards from our deck to our hand. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh. A lot of people think that Branded Lost doesn't really protect the Branded Fusion because Ash keeps on negating the Branded Fusion, but Lost versus Borload Savage Dragon, it does stop it. It cannot negate the Branded Fusion. You could try, it just doesn't work. Thus, we don't try. Now, it's okay, right? The boar load will just not negate the fusion. It will negate the newly summoned monster instead, but the branded lost also says you can't respond to our fusion summons. So the boar load just can't do anything. And in response to our own fusion summon, we could just shock on the Dragostepelia, put a counter onto the boar load savage dragon. It cannot chain to it, and then it'll be negated anyway. But, you know, we could just wait for it to activate. Sure. His savage doesn't have counters. Why doesn't it have counters? What am I missing? What happened to the counters on it? Did we uh, summon it without a link monster to equip? Did we, I, I mean, I'm in autopilot mode. I assumed it had a negate, but it did not matter if it had counters or not. Super Poly could not activate and it could have negated the activation of Branded Lost, but so what? I mean, we already have Mercurial, we already have big plays. Whether it had counters or not, it didn't even matter. The Savage never equipped anything. Okay, so I, I guess we whiffed up our boar load a little bit, but that's fine. It, it did not have any meaningful effect on this duel. You, Heartbreaker gets to know that we would have lost this anyway. So there you go. We know that post banless Branded is uh, still clapping up our rogue decks like nothing. Come forth, Quem. In response to your Mirror Jade summon with your toggle on, so you did not activate in an open game state, in response to its own summon, you want to activate to banish the Boar Load if it did have counters, and it would not be able to chain the gate. Goodbye, Boar Load. So we could just pretend that was in response to its own summon and that the Boar Load did not negate the loss, which it should have, if it had counters. And let's wipe this up, clean it up. 11,000 damage on the field. Surely we have lethal after attacking over a bunch of monsters. Yes, we do. A Lubelian for game. 2-0 victory, post banless Serenir, limited to one. Now, get ready. Begin. Math mech versus, well, Ignister, I guess, would be more fair to call the deck. We have, uh, we spiraling again. Yep, yeah, we spiraled earlier in the tournament. So Fortnite is here. Quick, yeah, uh, Waylay Davy, the perfect response to a deck that's only kept in check through Max C and you don't open up Max C. 
just surrender. Do not waste your time. We saved about, uh, what, maybe 10, 15 minutes there. Very well done. Let's hop into game two. Well, you had a crazy long combo and so do we. So let's get ready for this. Did Gachiri just make the Singularity unaffected? Yes. So the Singularity is the arrival, unaffected by everything. The Dark Fluid has double Monster Negate, which could be used twice in a turn, and even within the same chain link, so it is even better than Apollo USA. We're still not done. We're going to be reborning our Circular, linking this off into the Heat Soul. We can now draw a card every single turn, maybe drawing into more hand traps. Imperm, great, we could set that up. So what did we accomplish? The transcode states that all co-linked monsters cannot be targeted. The singularity is unaffected. The singularity could spin up to two cards in the field back to the hand. The firewall could send up to one monster back to the hand. And the dark fluid can negate twice. So negate, negate, spin, spin. And, you know, four disruption that are public and also unaffected. Oh, effect Veiler off the top of decks. The heat soul itself provided double disruption. It drew an imperm, it drew an availer, double disruption from heat freaking soul. All right, Illusion of Chaos adding the Magician soul, not using the Dark Fluid to negate that. Maybe Dark Fluid will negate this though. No, we are not. The Firewall Dragon spinning back the Magician soul before it activates the effect to drop to two cards. Okay, so the hard ones while face up has been used. Singularity, spin it back again. Now the Singularity is going to return them to the hand. Returning the master plan, which we want in the graveyard, back to the hand could be quite disruptive here. Very well done. Not just the monster on the field, but the master plan. Now we have the ability to draw two, but gets negated by the ash. Had we had a way to negate the activation, we could have used our other copy of the triple tactics talent. But uh, ash is not like ghost spell, where ghost spell negates the activation, ash negates the effect. Good job, Waylaid Davy. We have two essentially first turn kill decks battling for whoever goes first, they wins. When we go spell, the ability to reborn from the graveyard, which I guess would be the rescue. Rescuing or Selene. <clears throat> I think you could negate the helix also because it could summon from the deck or grave. We are using the ghost spell to negate the big red activation from reborning from the graveyard, the master plan. That is quite disruptive here, but do we still have a play? By sending the resort and assault to the graveyard, we're gonna be drawn to. We have machine duplication, duplicating the quick fix for double on the field from the deck, thus giving us all three quick fixes. That's right. Your eyes do not deceive you. This card is not limited to one like it was on the release of Master Duel. After all of that, we have negate anything with the Trigate. We have negate monster effect, negate monster effect. We have special summon monsters cannot activate unless they are linked. So you're gonna have to summon to where the Apollo is pointing to, which disrupts the main Ignister play of needing to free up your main monster zones. And we have pop two cards on the field through the sleeper, which is also indestructible and untargetable. Let's go. All right, uh, negate, 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 can't use, pop, and can't use spells. So that's about six disruptions. Can't use the field spell. We're going to be shotgunning the finger, banishing the ash. Alternative our ash is coming in the next reprint selection pack, not the main selection pack. Subtraction, reduce the Apollo USA, thus reducing her negates. She'll just negate, losing just one negate. Down to 800, we have one more negate left. And now we are just normal summoning the subtraction, wiping her out to then main phase two. We have to summon into the extra monster zone that the Trigate Wizard's pointing to. I think Trigate just lost a negate. As you can see here, it's now grayed out. When a card or effect is activated, you cannot negate the activation and banish because it missing, it's missing a co-link. 
it if we co-link with it, we give it negate again. And we have to co-link with it potentially because of the Nightmare Griffin disallowing us from activating special stone monsters. As you can see there, the circular cannot activate. The wicked could activate. The wi <laughs> wow. Wicked and everything it's pointing to cannot be destroyed. So we wasted the spiral sleeper to pop the indestructible wicked and the indestructible circular that couldn't even activate. Very well done. Now making the transcode talker. Now what's awkward about this is it's pointing to the trigate wizard. Wait, is it not? Okay, yep, it gained the effect. It was grayed out for a little bit. So now we gained our negate again. We could just negate the transcode talker, which we had to summon to where the trigate wizard's pointing to. But we're instead gonna use it to negate the link decoder, also banishing it. Do we have anything to reborn from the grave? Yes, we do. We have our cybers wicked. What do we have left here? Holy moly, are we actually breaking the field? Axis code can attack, it can uh, activate, it can wipe out cards. The sleeper can't be destroyed. Let's go. Ain't no way we're doing this. Banish the wicked, taking out the spiral gear, so now the sleeper can be destroyed by card effects. All right. Now, this has an effect, and we're activating it. I think it's a wild effect. If this card is sent to the graveyard, destroy as many cards as you control as possible. Wiping out our own fields. Why would we do that? To special summon a spiral super agent from your hand, deck, or grave. Okay. <laughs> what? Reborn double helix. Why we, why did we do that? Why we do that? Was there a reason to do that? Huh? Okay, I'm a little bit confused. Reborn in the Gachiri. Gachiri will make the heat soul unaffect. Oh, it's mandatory. <laughs> you have to, you have to do it. It's not an option. You have to wipe out your entire field. I did not know that. Okay, very. How do you out spiral? Go for the sleeper. That's the way. But we weren't able to end the duel here, unfortunately. Now, how many cards left in their action deck? They have six cards left. They have their own Axis Code Talker play. They could even Anima suck up the Heat Soul. Uh-oh. Spiral Resort is going to get Searching. We're going to declare Monster to add Sleeper from the Graveyard back to our hand, so we're going to at least be able to pop cards in the field. The Heat Soul's unaffected from Gachiri, though, so it cannot be sucked up by Anima. Right? We gachiri it. I do remember that. Yep, unaffected. And we have our sleeper still, it's still unaffected by the way. It's uh, it's fully unaffected. Access code talker, don't try to destroy it. Yeah, for the third time, it's gonna be unaffected. I promise you it's unaffected, yeah. But we're still trying, why not? Wipe out the heat soul while it could not be affected by anything. It could be destroyed by battle. And the only disruption we have is pop up to two cards in the field. So how does that work exactly when we can be destroyed? Target one spiral card you control and up to two cards the opponent controls, so we'll destroy ourselves plus two cards, okay? When do we do it? When do we do it? We have nine cards left in our extra deck. Oh my god. That just happened. <laughs> no way! <laughs> so Small World is supposed to banish Maxi, so he chose Maxi to banish, but he actually chose Maxi to activate Maxi in response to his small world instead of banishing it. This is like ashing your own small world instead of banishing it. The small world does nothing. Oh my gosh, ain't no way that just happened. That could never happen in real life. That's just a misclick. <laughs> it's a way like Davey doing the correct play after uh, Maxing his own small world. Very well done. You know, generally when that happens, you would have another monster in your hand because it's very likely turn one. So for that, for Maxi to be the only monster that you accidentally activate, that is such a rare occurrence. I'm so happy that we were able to witness it. Waylay Davey, I'm sorry that you had to be the one to share that with us. Let's hop into another duel.